Hi, my name's Rebecca from angelfoods.net and today we're going to do a ganache tutorial. To make ganache, what you'll need is first a bowl and spatula. I always use plastic. Plastic, um, if you use wooden ones, it actually um, attracts the bacteria. So we always use plastic. I like to use plastic bowls because I'm going to do my ganache in the microwave today. Some people do it on a stove top in a bain marie style over hot water in a metal bowl. But today I'm going to do it in the microwave. I like it. It's a lot quicker. Um, and there's less likely of getting water drops in the ganache as well. And then for the ganache, we're going to use some chocolate. I've got a big bag of chocolate here. I buy my chocolate in bulk from a um, bakery supply. Um, their name's Kerry Pinnacles. So the Kerry Pinnacle brand is a quite a good chocolate, dark chocolate compound. You can get chocolate from the supermarket. So the Nestle brand's really nice. So is um, the other ones that you can get in the supermarkets as well. You can get the really good high quality chocolates like the Belgium or Swiss chocolates, things like that. As long as they're melting chocolates. So chocolate drops or chocolate bars don't melt in the microwave. They're not made for melting. They're already set in their shape. So get a good melting chocolate for a ganache and a dark chocolate, not a milk chocolate. Milk chocolate won't work. If you wanted to do a white chocolate ganache, you can use white chocolate as well. Um, and the quantities are the same as well, the ratios that we're going to use. You'll also need fresh cream. Today I've got 100% pure cream from Paul's. It's a really nice one. Um, you can use the, the home brand or black and gold um, creams. They, they might be slightly like watered down a little bit. So 100% pure cream we'll use with the ganache and that is the secret to the ganache. That, that's all it is. So it's not an icing sugar. It's not a frosting or a butter cream. It's a thick, luxurious chocolate cream. It's amazing, amazing. So it goes perfectly with mud cakes. That's what it goes with the best. But also like gateaus or torts. Um, any type of layered cake but also sculptured cakes so that would be you really fancy you beaut oh my god amazing cakes that are 3d that um, have shape to them so imagine like a teddy bear sitting up or a dragon or anything really the sky's the limit with sculptured cakes but they're always done in a ganache rather than a buttercream or frosting uh, frosting because they hold um, it's shaped a lot better, especially at room temperature, which is what you have to use it at. So that's your um, two ingredients. That's all there is in a ganache. I've also got some electronic scales. So I do recommend using electronic scales and even for your normal recipes as well, you get them more exact. You get them to the gram and that's really important. Um, especially in, in cakes and getting the recipes right. So you don't want to add too much sugar. Or um, too much flour or the opposite of that either. So I've got electronic scales and if you've never used them before they are about $50 okay you can get them from the supermarket you can get them from um, cake decorating shops sometimes some packaging places so you can get them just about anywhere um, $50 they can go really expensive a couple hundred dollars for scales but they're very easy to use they should come with batteries so that's always important make sure they come with batteries um, they go up to about five kilos now as well so that can hold five kilos on the scales and they also go up in one gram increments so that means it will measure every single gram that you put on here so that's a really big bonus as well so if you weren't measuring by the cup full you can easily over cup fill or under fill whereas you can't with the electronic scales so I'll be using electronic scales do highly recommend it but completely up to you and for ganache, we're going to measure it out now. And the ratio that you want to use for ganache is one to three. So one part, one portion of cream 
to three parts, three portions of chocolate. So I'm going to put my bowl on the scales and I'm going to turn it on. You just press it on and it thinks for a couple of seconds and then I'll go to zero, zero grams. And all, a lot of the scales have different types of measuring. So it can be grams, it can be um, pounds and ounces. Then there's mils. So I'm pressing the unit button and it's going through the units. And then there's also fluid ounces. So I'm going to go back to grams and it's gone to zero. So I want to do a couple of cakes. So I'm going to weigh out 900 grams of chocolate. Let's make sure the bowl doesn't fall off. So for 900 grams of chocolate, that's three parts. You want one part of cream. So that's 300 grams. So 300 grams of cream, 900 grams of chocolate. So you can change that to whatever size that you, you require. If you need enough for five cakes, maybe do 1,500 mils of cho uh, grams of chocolate and then 500 grams or, or mils of the cream. Grams to mils are very similar. So we'll just, whatever you're using. So if you're doing chocolate in grams, do the cream in grams as well. So I'm just gonna add it on top. So. Instead of pulling the bowl off, getting another bowl, weighing it, and then putting it on top, the electronic scales allow you to add on top, and it's called tearing or tarring. So I just press the on off button again. If I hit it correctly, it thinks for a couple of seconds, and then it goes back to zero. So it's like you've got nothing in the bowl. So that's so you can add on top of it whatever you need. So I want 300. straight on top of the chocolate. There we go. So that's ready to make the ganache. Let me show you how to do it. I just gave the mixture a good stir and I coated all the chocolate in the fresh cream. And now we're going to microwave it. So we're gonna put it in initially for two minutes. I'm gonna pull it out. And we'll put it in the microwave again for another minute. Again in the microwave and it might need another minute after that. We'll see how it's going. I'll show you every step of the way. Let's do ganache. Check out my little zhuzhing technique. So this is how to incorporate the cream and the chocolate very smoothly and evenly. So a lot of people use their spatula and mix it in that way. And that can create air bubbles. But also, it's a, I don't know, maybe it's a bit more work that way. This way, you're doing it very evenly and consistently. And it comes together very, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing balls. So you've got to do this for about a minute or so. You can see the chocolate starting to melt and come together. We had it in the microwave for two minutes. You, you really don't want to overheat the chocolate, you want the bowl and the chocolate, like I can feel it down here, warm to the touch. You don't want it hot. If it's hot, there's a very high likelihood of burning the chocolate. And if you've burnt the chocolate, you will know, you'll be able to smell it. Let's push this chocolate down. You'll be able to smell it um, and you will be able to taste it. And if you've got burnt chocolate, that's throwaway material, unfortunately. So you always do less, less is more. So it's put in for a shorter period of time in the microwave. If I was doing a smaller size batch, I would probably do it for maybe a minute, minute and a half for the initial burst of heat. And you can see it's coming chocolatey more now. My little zhuzhin. We're gonna put it in for another minute next. So it's cooled down now, the side where I'm touching the the cream and the chocolate has cooled down a lot from the mixing and being exposed to the cool air and it's incorporating.
thank you so much for watching my chocolate ganache tutorial. If you want to check out any other video tutorials or Angel Foods franchising opportunities, please check out angelfoods.net. My name's Rebecca from Angel Foods. Coffee makes it possible to get out of bed, but cupcakes make it worthwhile. Thank you so much.